Praise the Lord and God bless you. This is Triumph Tuesday in another edition of Midday Matter. We thank you for being with us today. Today, uh, we want to look at what time it is. What time is it? Amen. We thank God for you being with us today. We ask you uh, to comment, like, subscribe, uh, whatever your preferred social media platform endorses. We uh, ask you to do that for us today. Give us a little boost uh, with the algorithm. But uh, if you want to contact us, our information is at the bottom of the screen and uh, you can reach out to us. If you go to our website, you can see all the different avenues of, of contact, of giving. If you want to sow a seed, and just to say, Lord, that you were uh, blessed by the word. But we're here for you midday for 10 minutes just to bless you and uh, praying that God uh, lifts you up by his word today. But uh, one of my scriptures I, uh, I really enjoy is Ecclesiastes chapter 3. We've been working through the book of Ecclesiastes for the last couple of weeks. And um, we're at Ecclesiastes 3 now. Um, a very, very popular scripture, but it says for everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, time to be born and a time to die, time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What gain has the worker from his toil? I've seen the business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I perceive that there is nothing better for them than to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. Also, that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. This is God's gift to man. I perceive that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it or anything taken away from it. God has done it so that people fear him. That which is already has been. That which is to be already has been. And God seeks what has been driven away. Moreover, I saw under the sun that in the place of justice, even there was wickedness. And in the place of righteousness, even there was wickedness. I said in my heart, God will judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time for every matter and for every work. I said in my heart, with regard to the children of man, that God is testing them, that they may see that they uh, themselves are but beasts, or another translation says animals. For what happens to the children of man and what happens to the beast is the same. As one dies, so dies the other. They will have the same breath, and man has no advantage over the beast, for all is vanity. All go to one place, all are from the dust, and the dust all return. Who knows whether the spirit of man goes to upward and the spirit of the beast goes down into the earth. So I saw that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his work, for that is his lot. Who can bring him to see what will be after him amen um thank god for the reading of his word so we look at the writer again he's talking about the vanity of living and he's talking about the case and what which we find ourselves and he goes through and he uh, mentions the different times and seasons that are are upon uh mankind time to mourn a time to die time to be born and time to die um it, it it cycles it continues to go is a thing that's continual um and it's going to happen time to plant time to dig up you know everything we do it even said a time to love and a time to hate uh some things you draw near to you and some things you are repulsed by 
All of those things are in the times and the seasons. And so, but it talks about, we go through these things and it seems mundane and it seems cyclical and uh, everything that we uh, go through seems to be common to man. But there is a pleasure in the work that we do. You spend, uh, you're coming off the weekend, you spend uh, time in your yard and you plant some things and you root up some things and you move some things that sometimes uh, you transplant, you, you separate stuff. And when you finish and it looks like what you had in your mind, there's a pleasure in it. And God gives you enjoyment, enjoyment um, for seeing those things come to pass. Um, you learn even, even the, the, the opposite nature of it, the dual nature or duality of the things that it listed time to tear and a time to sow. Uh, each one is needed. One may be negative, but it, in one sense, but another time it's, it's positive. Um, when you tear a piece of bread and share it, uh, it's, it's a positive thing. When you, uh, tear open, uh, a package, you know, it's a positive thing. Uh, but when you sew and close together, it's a positive thing. But when you're sewing up stitches, it's a negative and a positive thing. And all of it works together in its season and in its time. It's a negative that you got hurt, but it's a positive. You got the help you needed to sew it up. You know, uh, tearing bread, it's it's a positive that you're sharing, but it's you wish you had enough where you didn't have to tear it apart to, to split it with somebody. You know, just, just, just the different things in it. But all those things um, are... Are for your time but we go through all these things in life and once again he tells us there's nothing new what has been uh, has been and what will be uh, has already been it, it may come in another form may come in another fashion it's new it's the brand new horse buggy and carriage it's the brand new ship ships getting bigger uh, they've always gotten bigger they went from boats to ships and they went from lakes to, to crossing the ocean and, and saying that they discovered America. Um, but uh, I'm not going there, but uh, all these things. And, and now we we got ships that are cities on water. Uh, so it's, it's the same. It may be new in terms of what it looks like, but it's the same thing, going larger and going larger. And so uh, we have to find that there is joy in the things that we do and so uh he says in a place of justice there was wickedness in a place of righteousness there was wickedness um so so even uh wherever the the most pure and holy places that uh we can think of meaning in 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 things that were peaceful things that were joyous uh there's still wickedness you can go to the deserted highland go to aruba but yet there's still wickedness you go uh to some of the most beautiful places on earth there's still wickedness you go to church and and it's joyful and there's healing and there's deliverance and there's people set free demons cast out but there's wickedness and so uh wherever it is and so but yet what god does and that's what he claims as well what god does will last eternally and it puts us in our place, is what it's saying, uh, because he has put the sun in the sky and it's worked for generations. We can't fix it. We can't do anything to salvage it. It is what it is. We think we know everything about the earth, but there are the depths of the earth that we don't understand. There's the inner workings of volcanoes that we can't possibly begin to explore. There are depths that we can't explore because of the pressure. And so we're just now seeing some of the deepest places on earth but even those places that we've seen there is uh, even deeper right off the coast of of georgia and south carolina the deepest places on earth uh bermuda bahamas uh, maybe just past in that area but um yeah that's that's some of the deepest places that uh we can find but yet we still don't understand it and so it lets us know that god is greater that God is. And so what we say again is that only what you do for Christ will last. Enjoy your work, enjoy your labor, enjoy the things that you do here, but know that God is eternal and that we must live 
for him. We don't know what happens after we leave here. We have all the ideas and the, and the clues that we glean from the scriptures and from other people's testimonies that said they've been to death and back, but yet only we know is that the promise of God is that he will and he has prepared a place for us. Amen. And so we have to live, live believing that God is everything, that life is full of vanity, full of things that just continue to be and will be. But living for God is eternal. Amen. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. Please reach out to us, email us uh, or, or, or text us or just respond to this video. Don't just watch and do nothing, but just say, praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you, pastor, or whatever. And that'll be much appreciated. God bless you. May the Lord be with you. Uh, may his face shine upon you and give you peace. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.